Welcome back. This morning, Bolero, which is the world's largest owner and operator of bowling centers, announced bowling alleys, let's call them, announced they will list on the New York Stock Exchange through a merger with ISOs Acquisition Corporation. With more on this, as well as the post-pandemic outlook for bowling, joining us now in a CNBC exclusive is Bolero Corporation founder, chairman and CEO, Tom Shannon. Tom, congratulations on the news today. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Thank you, let's man. get right into it. Why, why a SPAC, and what will the money that you raise through this process enable you to do? Well, we looked at uh, various ways of going public. Uh, we considered them all, and at the end of the day, we, we decided to partner up with ISOS Acquisition Corp., which is led by two executives, George Berrios and Michelle Wilson, who were senior leaders at WWE. And uh, they bring a wealth of experience that's relevant to us. We own the Professional Bowlers Association, so we're doing about 70 hours of original TV content every year that we produce. Um, and we see great expansion opportunities for that on the media side, in gambling, in gamification, in global expansion. And these are all things that uh, ISIS can help us with. Gambling for bowling. What does that look like? Well, gambling for bowling has been around for more than a century. So leagues okay. uh, are, are really gambling. You know, you... You put money into a pot and you get that at the end of the day or the end of the season uh, based on various things. But we've actually now gone global. We have a virtual uh, bowling tournament that we, un we unveiled last summer called Rumble. Um, and so you can compete in any bowling center that's on this software system that, that we're partnered up on uh, anywhere in the world. We had 26 countries participate, uh, over 5,000 entrants in our beta test. It worked spectacularly well. And the next evolution of that is to be able to bet on your next shot in center. So you walk up to the line and we give you odds on whether or not you're going to get a strike or some other score, whether you'll pick up the spare. And so it's, it's introducing a new, exciting gamification to the traditional sport of bowling. Yeah. Um, obviously, we're seeing the world reopen, or at least the U.S. reopen. People are, are going out and doing more things right now. I'm reading this note that Bolero Bowling Center revenue is already exceeding pre-pandemic levels despite continued capacity restrictions. Uh, I guess add a little more meat to the bones on, on that one. What are you seeing? Who's coming out? Where is it happening the most actively? It's really been phenomenal, Morgan. I mean, we couldn't have predicted it would come back this strongly. Um, since May, we've been up over 100 percent to 2019 numbers. Uh, recently, one of our weeks, we were at 113 percent same store sales versus 2019, same period. Um, California has come back extremely strong. I'll tell you that after 14 months of lockdown, there was a lot of pent up demand, but we're seeing it across the country. We're in 31 states. And we're going to end this year with about 325 bowling centers. So uh, we're really seeing strength across the board. All right. Well, let's talk about the centers themselves and the new uh, capital you're going to have coming in. I mean, are you going to expand? Uh by virtue of acquisition, potentially, now that you'll also have a currency? Uh, or, you know, is the opportunity more in the current centers in terms of simply improving margins? Well, you know, that's a great question. It's both. So we've renovated about 120 of our centers. They look like the one you're seeing behind me. This is in Arcadia, California. Um, there's 180 left that could be upgraded. And we see really significant increases, and in many cases, doubling of revenue and tripling or quadrupling of EBITDA after we renovate a center. We're also active in acquisition. So the U.S. bowling market has about 3,500 independently owned uh, bowling centers, mostly mom and pop. So even though we're the largest bowling operator in the world by a factor of 8x, believe it or not, we still only have about 8% market share of the U.S. bowling market. So wow. we can acquire, we can build new, we're in the process of building two new centers, and we can continue to renovate. We have many, many vectors of growth. And then there's international. Here's an interesting statistic. There are 3 million league bowlers in South Korea and 1,200 bowling centers in that market alone. So it's a global opportunity for us. Tom, real quick, we have 20 seconds. you have any trouble hiring people, uh, or is the, is the employment market okay for you right now? You know, it's, it's a challenge, but frankly, it's been a challenge for years. The good thing about bowling is it's largely self-serve. So if I give you a lane in shoes, you go and have fun for an hour or two, and you don't really need a lot of human intervention. On the food and beverage side, you do, but... The core activity is extremely high margin and not labor intensive. I still want to know how you're cleaning those those lanes and those shoes post COVID, but we're up against the end of the hour. So we're going to leave the conversation there. Tom Shannon, thanks for joining us.
Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.